How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Rangers Rundown. The Rangers have just won their third game of the season. Six points, which is enough to put them atop of the Metropolitan standings. One point ahead of the Pittsburgh Penguins, who dropped their game tonight against the Montreal Canadiens in overtime. Columbus still has not won a game. New Jersey still has not won a game. Capital, or uh, sorry, Carolina and Philadelphia still undefeated. Who would have thought Philadelphia would be uh, 2-0 in their first two games? I'm sure that's not going to last. Really weird to see. Torts chuckling about his new job, I'm sure. But this game, Rangers against Anaheim, 6-4 to four win for the Rangers. A lot of goals to talk about on both sides of the game. Couple notes before we start. Strom and Vetrano, this was their return to MSG. Strom, far more than Vetrano, sure, but we did like Vetrano last year, so it was always good to see him. They did have a little video tribute for Strom during one of the TV timeouts in the first period. Blay, this was his season debut, and he did all right through a couple hits, uh, able to churn up a little bit of offense playing on that third line. Speaking of the lineup, Kreider's advantage at Kako, Panarin, Strom, Lafreniere. So the top two lines, exactly the same. But now that Blay is back in the lineup, we have VC, Heedle, and Blay as that third line. Goudreau moves down to the fourth line with Hunt and Reeves. So Lindgren, Fox, Miller, Truba, Jones, Snyder, the decor again. Hayek is out of the lineup, thank goodness. And Shesterkin was in net for the whole game. Now Shesterkin did win the game, but four goals is a lot more than we're used to seeing him give up. Now, the defensive mistakes that the Rangers made to lead to these goals, not Shesterkin's fault, but he does pay the price for them with his statistics. We get into the first period. Zibanejad has a chance uh, from the slot early on in the game. Blay with a big hit two minutes in. Lafreniere and Miller make a good combined defensive play to prevent a shot from the slot for the Ducks. Shesterkin makes a great save. Schneider receives a pass in the slot for a chance in close. I really like Braden Schneider's game so far this season. I think he is trying to produce a little bit more offense than he was last year. I think last year he was very much just trying to not make defensive mistakes. And this year he's a lot more willing to jump into the play, which is very nice. You kind of see him as like a, like a baby Truba or a baby Miller, something like that. Um, five minutes in, the shots are only two to one in favor of the Rangers. Now, Blay has a chance from the circle. He's not exactly known as a sharpshooter, so that one did not go in. 6.15, McTavish takes a delayed game penalty. Uh, Kreider is in front, and he got the deflection, but uh, the save was made during that power play. And then a 7.34, Trocek with his first power play goal as a Ranger from Zibanejad and Panarin. Beautiful passing play. It was just a backdoor tap in for Trocek. Very nice goal. Panarin has a breakaway halfway through the period, but Panarin doesn't score on breakaways. And of course, nothing changes in this game. That leads to a shift's worth of good pressure for the Rangers. At 11.29, Grant takes a hooking penalty, and during that power play, Zibanejad would score at 13.10 from Trocek and Panarin. A couple minutes later, Vetrano, hey, we know that guy, he would score at 15.48. It was just a snipe from the circle. We're so used to seeing him do that last season. Weird to see him do it on your own net, but we're not surprised. So it's 2-1. Um, in this first period. Heedle takes a hooking penalty at 15.51. Goudreau has a shorthanded chance right off the rip of that penalty kill. Shesterkin, two huge saves during that penalty kill, and Truba, Truba saved a goal with his stick. So it very easily could have been 2-2 at the end of the first. Anaheim pushes towards the end of the period, but the last 20 seconds were all Rangers, really pushing, trying to make a 3-1. Shots at the end of the first period, 15 to 9. So the Rangers very much peppering Gibson that first period. We get to the second. Fox breaks up a two-on-one early. Truba takes a one-timer to the helmet. Uh, I forget which player it was. Maybe it was Troy Terry. He tries to rip a one-timer from the circle. It gets up high. It hits Truba in the helmet as he's spinning to block it. He would go to the locker room for concussion protocol, but he would be fine. He'd come back into the game. 134, so very shortly 
Into the second period, Ant Zegris, he ties it for Anaheim 2-2. It was just uncontested coming up the wing. He's able to put it in the back of the net. Anaheim controls a lot more than the Rangers do in the beginning of this second period, really trying to push and maybe even take the lead. Heedle has a good shot six and a half minutes in. Rangers have tried by the middle of the second period-ish. They've tried three or four different times to pass to the low slot area for a one-timer. And every time it was blocked. Anaheim doing a very good job getting in the way of those shots really close into the net. Truba is back on the bench about halfway through the period. 9.54, Kako would score a goal from Zabanajad and Fox. They first gave it to Zabanajad, but when you watch the replay, Kri or, uh, not Kreider, Kako, he does deflect it into the pads of Gibson. It bounces off of Klingberg's skate and goes into the net. So it is Kako's goal from Zabanajad and Fox. The fourth line with a very physical grinding shift after that. Kako with a great wrist shot off of a face-off shortly after that. First line continues with a really great shift. So the first line generating so much offense tonight. 15-17, Shattenkirk takes a tripping penalty. Kreider driving hard to the net off of a Panarin pass during that power play. Trocek breaks his stick during the power play. Power play. He skates to the bench, he grabs a new one, and he comes back and receives an excellent pass in the slot for a great chance. Would have been an awesome goal just after getting a brand new stick, but unfortunately it does not go in. And then this power play is the first time we've seen the second power play unit. Um, the first two power plays that Anaheim took in the game, the first unit ended up scoring goals. So this was the first time over halfway through the game, we actually see power play two get out there. 17-39, Lafreniere would score a goal from Heedle and Truba. So Lafreniere contributing. This was right after this power play ended. The second power play unit being the kid line with Truba. And I don't know who the fifth person on that. It might have been Jones. Um, but the kid line was out there because they were just finishing up power play two. Lafreniere scores a goal from Heedle and Truba, so that kid line putting in some more Kako involved in that goal as well. It was a cross-crease pass from Heedle after a very good forecheck. Lafreniere puts it in. First line has a great shift shortly after that. And then the Rangers aren't done scoring goals in the second period. 1926, Panarin scores a goal from Fox and Lindgren. Rangers force excuse me, a turnover in the neutral zone. Panarin walks right into the high slot. He looks for the pass. Obviously, it's Panarin, but he rips it, and he ends up putting the Rangers up 5-2 to two at the end of the second period. Shots 18-7 to seven in favor of the Rangers just in that second period. We get to the third. Stolarz is in net for Anaheim. Gibson gets pulled after letting in five goals through two periods. The same situation Gibson had in their previous game against the Islanders where he let in five goals in two periods and got pulled. So the same story for Gibson tonight. Stolarz played pretty well. Trocek with a breakaway a minute in, wouldn't score. Third line with a great shift after that. Panarin has a good shot from the high circle. It hits Stolarz in the mask, and I'm sure that hurts. Anaheim's first shot of the period comes five minutes in. Their second shot of the period would go in the net at 5.33. Comtois would score a goal off of a one-timer. Third line has a good chance right after that goal, so the Rangers pushing right after that. First line with good pressure, eight minutes in. Kako almost scores again. Shesterkin makes a huge save on Adam Henrique. He dove. Henrique was on the side, had pretty much an open net. Shesterkin dove over to the side of the net to stop that shot. Anaheim really pushing to get closer. At this point, it's 5-3. Two-goal lead is the most dangerous lead in hockey. So if Anaheim would have scored again to make it 5-4, make the Rangers sweat even more, maybe this is a different game. 10:29. Uh, Vetrano takes an interference penalty, and that would be the end of the game for the Anaheim Ducks. 11:42. Zabanajad scores his second power play goal of the evening from Panarin and Fox. Panarin, no look, cross ice pack pass. He comes up the right wing, staring at the goalie the whole time, scoots it across the ice. Zabanajad rips it. We've seen it a million times. Teams still don't know how to defend it.
So Banerjad walks into the circle for a hat trick try shortly after that. Panarin has 10 points now through the first four games of the season for the Rangers, which is a Rangers record. He broke the record for points in the first four games of a season. It was nine. I believe that record is Leach and Messier. Both hold that record together. But now Panarin stands alone. Ten points in the first four games of a season. Just crazy good pace for him. First line plus the third pair dominating the offensive zone for an entire shift. I don't think Am Anaheim touched it once in the 45 seconds they were cycling and shooting that puck. At 16-14, Grant would score a goal for Anaheim to make it 6-4. Uh, it was a wide open net after a good passing play. Not much Shesterkin could do about that. Poor defensive zone coverage on the Rangers' part. Stolarz is pulled with 90 seconds, but Anaheim wouldn't be able to score. No empty net for the Rangers either, so the Rangers end up winning 6-4. Shots 9-8 in favor of the Rangers in that third period, but shots definitely more even at the latter part of the game. The trivia question of the evening, who are the only two players to record 400 or more points with both the Rangers and the Ducks? Pause the video if you want to think about it. I had no idea the answer to this question. I rarely know the answers to these questions, but maybe you guys know more about hockey than I do. What am I saying? You probably definitely know more about hockey than I do. The answer is Steve Ruchin, who had 468 points, and Tomas Sandstrom, who had 429 points. Where to put, ooh, stats first, stats. Shots, 43 to 22 in favor of the Rangers. So through four games, the Rangers have shot, I think it's 35 or more times at the goalie in these first four games, which is phenomenal. The Rangers ended last season on average shooting only 29 shots a game. This year, they're averaging high 30s in shots, so miles better than they were last year. If they can keep this up, if they're able to outscore some of their early season defensive problems and really build up a nice just safety net of points in this really tough division, we're going to be waiting for the playoffs end of November, early December. We're just going to be waiting for the playoffs. We'll see how much this momentum can carry, though. Face-offs, 52.6%. Love it above 50%. Power play, 3 for 4. The power play dominated tonight. Hits 27 to 17 in favor of the Rangers. Blocks 13 to 12 also in favor of the Rangers. Where to put the Rangers on the glory graph tonight? They did win, so they're in the top half. How was their effort? Offensively, their effort, fantastic. Defensively, Anaheim scored four goals on 22 shots. That is not fantastic for the Rangers' defensive numbers. All four goals are not Shesterkin's fault. Really good one-timer setup, really good passing plays. Yes, Shesterkin needs to stop the puck, but sometimes if your defenseman hanging out to dry, there's really nothing you can do. So they're definitely in the top, and I will put them just over in to the yellow. I'll put them right here. Yes, they won. Yes, they had great effort, but the defensive holes push them back towards the center of this graph. So that's where I'll put the Rangers. Agree to disagree in the comments for sure. Maybe you want to see me put them in the red for the first time this season. I'm saving it for a game where they were lucky to win. I don't want to call this a lucky win for the Rangers. I think they dominated most of the game. You can't call that luck. So we'll save this one. I think that's a fair spot to put them. You can disagree if you want. The Rangers' next game is at home on Thursday. The San Jose Sharks coming to town. I don't know if they play tonight, but I know that they have not won a game yet. I think they're 0-4 to start the season. So should be another win for the Rangers Thursday night, putting them 4-1 to start the season. Hopefully I didn't just jinx them. But if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next rundown.